Many people who've listened to you in the past have now stopped listening to you. <laughs> yep. And some of them now attack you openly. Yep. Why do you believe they have done this? Well, in every person's case uh, that I know of that have done this, where they have been listening at one point or even quite favourable to the information that I've presented at one point, and now they go around attacking me openly or publicly, every single one of them has, has usually received some direct feedback that they asked for from me, whether it's public or private, and, and I've given them the direct feedback, I've given them the opinion they asked for, mm -hmm. and they've reacted angrily to that opinion. And instead of feeling through their feelings of anger and rage about what I've said, and realise that that's actually covering over many of their addictions to mm -hmm. wanting to hear something completely different, they have instead chosen to then revert to attacking me openly and publicly. Mm -hmm. Now, I feel that these people are not practising what I'm preaching to them, because I certainly don't do that. I don't, I don't attack people publicly and openly whenever they've attacked me. Oh, what I try to do is I try to just say the truth publicly and openly with every interaction. And, and I don't, uh, and I'm not focused on trying to pull down a person or belittle them. I'm just trying to show, demonstrate what the actual truth is about God's truth or love in terms of every interaction. And that's my desire. So, so I find for many people who have done this, um, they've always been generally triggered by one event or for some people, more, a few more than one events where they've asked me my personal opinion and they've expected me to say something completely different than what I've actually said to them. Mm -hmm. Now, that expectation in itself is a demand uh, and it's an addiction where they just want somebody to tickle their ear. You know, they just want somebody to say to them things that are like sweet nothings in their ear that basically mean nothing, that is not going to help them the progress, but that's really what they wanted from me. Now, I'm not that kind of person, as anybody who knows me knows. I'm not that kind of person who's just going to tell you something because I, I might be able to make you feel happy for a moment or tell you something because, you know, you want me to tell, it, tell you that thing. And I don't tell you things because I want something from you either. I don't want anything from you. I'm going to tell you, if you ask me the question, I'm going to tell you what I think. So don't ask me what I think if you don't want to know. <laughs> and there's other examples as well, isn't there? Not just when a person's asked you directly, what would be the other instance in which you would tell people the truth about what they're doing? Well, if a person is interacting with me on a private or public level, and they are coming into my space by their choice, not by my own. In other words, I have not invited them there. They have come there by their own, you know, desire or invitation. And then they begin to, you know, to do things with me that I believe are unloving. Mm -hmm. Then I will tell them that those things are unloving and I'm not going to continue the interaction with them unless they stop. Mm -hmm. And many of those people, of course, don't see that their actions are unloving nor do they wish to stop them. And so I say, well, I'm stopping them then. That's it from, uh, I'm not having any more interaction with you. Now, under those circumstances, those people generally get very angry mm -hmm. because they, their addiction to whatever they wanted to do with me, which is usually in most cases, those people wanted to attack me or belittle me or humiliate me in some way. And they now no longer have the opportunity to do so. Now they try to do it publicly. So if they have a means at their disposal, like some members of the media have, then they go and say all these false things in the media so that, so that they get their you know, satisfaction out of attacking me, even though many of the things they claim are completely false. And for those people who are not members of the media who've come to a seminar or something like that, they then go around to their friends and tell all their friends that I'm a terrible person, usually call me a lot of swear words in the process mm -hmm. and never go there again. But all of, it, all of it's happening because they're just very angry and they didn't get what they wanted. And what I find in today's society, particularly in Western society, is whenever somebody doesn't get what they want, they then criticise the person who didn't give it. Yeah. Now, I don't believe everyone on this planet should get what they want. I, I believe that a lot of what people want on this planet is out of harmony with love, out of harmony with truth, out of harmony with ethics, out of harmony with morality. And there's no way that I'm going to feed those particular things when I'm teaching something completely different. So, so any person who comes to me expecting that they're going to get certain addictions met or get certain desires met, uh, who doesn't know me very well, will often go away very disappointed and sometimes quite angry. Yeah. Now, what a person does in their rage is an interesting thing, I feel. 
If a person who's angry then starts attacking the person who they feel made them angry, then they're not looking internally at themselves as to why they're so angry. A person who doesn't have any issues wouldn't be that angry. Mm -hmm. Anger is a, is a self-justified position to, to, um, to, to stop a person, an individual, from acknowledging anything that's out of harmony with love that's deeper within them than the anger itself. And, and my suggestion to such people is, I, if I was you, I would pause before you get all angry and upset with anybody and, and start to look at yourself and say, why am I so angry about this particular thing? And why do I feel that my behavior is justified? In my opinion, anger is never justified, ever. And that's what I teach, it's never justified. So, so my feelings are any person who justifies their anger, it's one thing to have it, you can have it if you want it, but, but if you're going to justify your anger and then in your justification of the anger, attack another person, then all you're doing is making your soul darker, you're making the condition of the world much more oppressive, and you're adding to the problems of this planet. And my suggestion is if you really want things to change in a more positive direction, then perhaps you need to start with you. Yeah. And, and start with the fact that you have anger within you, that you ha have obviously got from some childhood experiences that you're in denial of, or from adulthood demands that you're in denial of, and it's time for anybody who's in that state to actually start looking at that emotionally and, start, and stop projecting that onto the world, including onto me, because I don't need it, and nor does anyone else in the world. <laughs> okay, uh, let me talk you through a few more questions on this topic. Sure. There are people out there who would say, look, I'm not angry, AJ's just a mongrel. Or <laughs> but, but they always say that, but what have I done to make them feel like I'm a mongrel? They've, they've never got any statement of that. And the reason why is because I haven't done anything in most cases. And, and, I, and I suggest all cases, I've never done anything to harm them. Mm -hmm. And I've certainly never done anything to purposefully harm them. So, so why would they call me a mongrel? There's got to be, and, and unfortunately, when you ask these people, they go, oh, he just is, or, you know, he did something. And a lot of times then they lie, actually, mm -hmm. because they have to manufacture something that I did that I never did yeah. in order for somebody else to actually agree with them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, can, I can't accept that kind of behaviour in anybody, really. My feelings are, if you think I'm a mongrel, then... <laughs> I'm sorry for using that word, word you use, now you've repeated but, it seven times. But if you, but think, <laughs> but if you think I am... Then, then how about, you know, saying why? Like, and if it's just because I'm saying I'm Jesus, well, I don't think that's a good reason. If it's just because I receive donations from people that they've given from their heart, I don't think that's a very good reason. Uh, you know, so say the real reasons why you feel I am. Mm -hmm. And when it gets down to it, the majority of people have no idea why they feel I am, they just feel I am. And uh, I find that very interesting too, because that often indicates that they just have no desire to hear any truth whatsoever and anybody who tells any, is just going to be a mongrel to them. And that's the way, and I feel those kind of people, you, you're going to, you're the kind of people who, who cause this earth to change slowly, who cause the environment to change slowly. You're the kind of people who attack other people all the time because you don't get what you want. You're the kind of people who need to change a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I suggest you try to change mm -hmm. and you'll be a lot happier and so will anyone around you if you do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? And it's very common, isn't it, for people to neglect to mention the personal feedback that you've given to of, them. They always do, yeah. yeah. What, what happens with most people who have been, become angry with me is they neglect to mention the circumstances that were surrounding when they first became angry with mm -hmm. me. Because in most cases, they will have to say that I wasn't angry with them. Most, in almost all cases, I'd have to say, they asked me to tell them what I finished up talking to them about. Mm -hmm. and, and they wouldn't, if they admitted all of that, then anybody listening to them would say, well, what you're angry about, <laughs> you know what I mean? And of course, so most people who, who are now angry with me don't want to do all of that. So they just make out there's some kind of hidden agenda or something, something that um, somebody else will actually accept as a reason. And, uh, and I find most of them are very dishonest. Um, in fact, and when I recollect the circumstances surrounding their first point of rage with me, um, I know exactly what was the cause of their first point of rage with me. And in pretty much every case that I've ever seen, there was always a first point when mm -hmm. I know 
that their, their mood towards myself shifted because of something that I said. And that something that I said was always something they asked me for. They asked a per, for a personal opinion on that particular subject. Okay, so let me just draw you in on that point. Mm -hmm. What if someone says, well, no, I didn't ask him a direct question right at that moment before he told me that whatever he told me. Um, well, in, my, in the majority of cases they have. That's okay. the irony. Yep. In the majority of cases they have. And the only other circumstance where I've actually told them something they didn't want to hear was when they were in my face trying to do something towards me, which was out of harmony with love. Yeah. And what do they expect me to do under those circumstances? Of course I'm going to say something about that. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel in both cases, one of them is the uh, attempt to force me into a position of being abused, which I'm not going to accept. And the other position is they asked me for information. And, and which I freely give, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and they didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And they're the only two circumstances I've ever seen anybody get upset with me. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anybody get upset with me for any other reason than that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, um, and I also know that you have a personal kind of a policy about public uh, feedback and private feedback. Certainly. Can you tell us about that? Well, I feel that if a person has uh, done something with me privately, where they've abused me privately or they've attacked me privately, then I will talk to them privately about that matter and, and you know, hopefully resolve that matter. If, if they don't resolve the matter and they still think that they can attack me privately, then I just say, I don't want to spend any more time with you and I don't. Mm -hmm. If a person attacks me publicly, then that's very, very different. When they start to attack me publicly or start sending me emails, which are all to my public addresses and so forth, then I start going, well, no, now you're not doing it privately anymore. Mm -hmm. You're doing it to other people and you're saying things about me to other people publicly and you're also attacking me publicly and I'm going to say something about that publicly. Yeah. <laughs> and my general view viewpoint is if somebody does it privately, I will... I will do it privately with them. If they do it publicly, then I must do it publicly in order to help people who are involved in the public interaction to understand the truth about the matter as far as I'm able. Yeah. And that's why I take that policy. And that also counts, doesn't it, for when somebody is representing, supposedly representing you publicly or what you're teaching publicly. Yes. So they may not be in direct attack towards you. No. But, but if, they're making, if they're misrepresenting what I'm teaching publicly, then I feel very strongly that I have to now, if I have the time and I'm, I'm able, okay. so there's always those pr provisos, if I have the time and I'm able to give my time to the situation, that I actually correct the issue publicly because, because that person is teaching other people that I'm saying things that I'm not saying. Yeah. So, you know, I can't agree with that. So I always will share with, about that with other people. Now, sometimes those people get very offended and I say, well, stop teaching those things publicly then, mm -hmm. you know, come and talk to me first before you start saying what I think, what you think I'm teaching, you know, because, because unless you're making sure of it, I'm going to correct it mm -hmm. because there is enough untruth on this planet already without people adding to it. Yeah. And there's enough untruth, there's enough misrepresentation of divine truth and of myself and of yourself mm -hmm. and of everything we do. There's enough lies in the media and there's enough lie people lying about us pub publicly on internet forums and so forth already for us to be a supportive part of that. Well, of course, we're not going to support that. Yeah. So we're going to do what we can. We're not going to worry about it very much, but we're going to do what we can given the circumstances and situations to correct that untruth. Yeah. And of course, we have a desire to do that because we feel very attached to truth. We love truth and we feel that truth is everything. Truth is what sets people free. Truth is also what opens people to love. Truth is what also helps people understand that there's a lot more to learn. And, and without the truth, none of those things can ever happen. Mm -hmm. And also, God loves truth and all of God's laws are about truth. And a person can't progress without actually learning how to tell the truth, recognise the truth and also practice the truth in their day to day life. So I feel telling the truth and saying the truth about circumstances and things are very, very important in our day to day life. Yeah. So that's what we do. <laughs>